another edition of Stealing Whiskey. I'm Doug Evans. I'm Michelle McCarthy. Uh, we're just going to talk randomly about topics in the steel industry. It's a it's something we love to do. Uh, we hope to entertain you a little bit, give you maybe a little bit of knowledge, and hopefully don't bore you. As well as we drink whiskey. What are you drinking today? Uh, Cut Spike whiskey. It's a whiskey that's distilled up in Omaha, Nebraska. I'm drinking local today. Nice. What about you? I've got actually a mix. So it's uh, Knob Creek produces a old fashioned uh, mixer. Okay. And so I enjoy it. It's, it's tasty. So that's what I'm drinking today. All right. The topic today will be connections. Um, I've been in the industry a couple decades or longer, and it's just a phenomenal, uh, intriguing topic uh, because it's done. There's so many things to discuss when talking about connections. Um, you know, and just at, just at the top level is, is the structural integrity of a connection. And, and the billions of dollars of research and all the things that people have done throughout time to validate that this connection, this conglomeration of bolts and welds and material will hold something up. Right, so under a certain load. And there's everything from, you know, very basic connections to patented licensed connections like side plate, Dura fuse, or brace, Simpson strong tie. I'm missing probably a couple more. Yeah, probably dozens uh, actually. But all of those connection types are things that help people be more efficient as well, getting their con connections up to maybe withstand certain conditions like seismic loading or something like that. That's where you tend to see a lot of those types of things. Um, you know, let's let's start. Let's draw back. Let's start at the basics. When you're getting down to structural integrity and connections, where do you start? Yeah, well, and, and it, again, to say it's the concept of connection design or connections has founded companies and, and made careers. And well, so it's just a, ours. It, yeah, it, and ours. So how does it, how do they get applied in a project? Let's, let's just start there. So there's a number of ways that connections get applied or get specced or however you want to call it. Um, one could be delegated design, sure. where uh, maybe the, the engineer that's deciding the member sizes and strengths has said, hey, you know what, I'm going to delegate the connection design down to a manufacturer. Or to a connection design engineer. Or to a connection design engineer. Other ways it could be done um, is that the, the engineering company, um, especially in a, like in a big industrial building with seismic area or wherever, right. the engineering uh, spends a lot of time hand calcing or creating MathCAD Excel spreadsheets to do their connection design fully at the engineering level while they're doing member design and pushing it down saying this is what I want. Well, and when that happens, say you have a situation where you're, you know, your drawings are delivered with spec connections, how does a detailer or a fabricator handle that? Uh, and depending, right? right. So if so it's, it's spec and it says, hey, these are the connections you have to do, you don't have liberty. Yeah, so, so they're going to apply them, right? right. Um, and I have customers all over the board, trust me, that have, get the, the specified connections versus the delegated. Mm -hmm. But when something, something's specified, it can be done. Um, uh, a customer of mine up in Minneapolis actually models the entire joint, um, whether it's an automated connection design using SDS2 or, or just something that he's built, but he builds the actual right. connections to shut down, and it works. But um, some people will go with, a, like a schedule, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you take a, the nominal depth of a member, the length, you pull down a schedule and you say, okay, it's this material, this many rows of bolts. And, and again, when I go back to the original statement of, of the billions of dollars of research on structural, structural integrity and how this has created mm -hmm. careers that we relegate the application of a connection to a schedule in, in a project. Right, where it's it, completely removed from the structure. You're just going over this table and saying, W18, five rows of bolts. Right. That's about the least amount of thought you can give it. Right. And and it may not actually work right. in the situation. So when, when you look at a connection that's applied in a structure, mm -hmm. there's there's things that happen on the other side of the member. It could be opposing members. It could be perpendicular members. Again, there could be additional loading requirements. Right. It could be erecting um, rules. There, there's a number of things that just going to a schedule that's been a company document that you use and you pull out to send in your construction documents, say here's my connection right. specs, um, seems like it doesn't give it its due as as important of an item as it is in construction. Well, today. the only thing the schedule does 
is consider the structural integrity of yeah. the connection. Really, none of those other things, because it doesn't know. It's disconnected. It's out there. It's a table. It says, yeah, I generally do this. Right. It's not living, breathing, working with the model. And a number of the RFIs are cases where this this table doesn't work. Right. And so then the detailer has got to either come up with a recommendation or saying, hey, there's an issue, please solve it. Which still requires an RFI. Correct. Right. And when, when in, and that creates project time loss, mm -hmm. uh, inefficiencies there, and then your project gets put on hold if there's other projects that are able that are going. So um, it, it certainly is causes a lot of problems, the ambi ambiguity right. in specking it that way. And, and it doesn't even consider, so there's two other levels, right? Right, right. You have manufacturing efficiencies mm -hmm. and you have erection efficiencies. While the structural integrity is the most important because if a connection falls down, that's right. as bad as it can get. But then we look at the cost and the time. Mm -hmm. And the owner of a building yeah. can appreciate your ability as a fabricator to affect the cost of the project by saying, well, say you get the loads. Say, say it is a delegated design in this case. Mm -hmm. You get the loads and it says, well, it's only got to carry 36 kips here in this spot. I don't need five rows of bolts. Penny? Right. If that's a big project, it's all the way along, you could save quite a bit of money, depending. And, and I've got fabricators that have tooled themselves. Um, for example, let's say you're just doing a beam-to-beam -beam web uh, connection, mm -hmm. where they, they create maybe T's. They've pre-built uh, a system where they don't have to cope beams. They can just square right. cut them and apply connections to it. It's much more efficient for their fabrication. Uh, the structural integrity has yeah. been worked out. They're before. doing the, they're doing their welding in the shop, welding a T into the flange of a beam, right? For another beam to come in and connect to it with a clip angle bolted bolted connection, let's say, Absolutely. or maybe it's a welded on the beam that supported the supporting one's going to get mm -hmm. bolted connection out in the field. So to them, the cost of welding it in the shop is way cheaper than doing anything out in the field, and the value to them maybe. They're sacrificing maybe the cost of a welder doing all that work in the shop to be able to get that building up quicker. So it's really about what's the most important to them. How can I be most efficient? Whether whether it's more efficient and more important to be quick getting everything up in the field and cutting their timeline down on the erection, or is it more important to just save the cost and calculate bolt holes, that kind of which, which again, side plate has mm -hmm. shown those efficiencies at times right. as well. So. Uh, when you consider manufacturing efficiencies and then erection efficiencies, on top of structural integrity, that schedule connection, right. or library as you may call it, right. um, just doesn't seem like it's thought through enough and causes a lot of issues downstream right. um, on a project. Right, and you're right, okay, schedule connection and library connection are very different. Correct. I was maybe using the word wrong when we were talking about it before we started filming, but a library connection it's a static connection that says, hey, put exactly this connection on in this place, in this place, in this place, and it's a kind of almost like a copy-paste, but right. you're going back to the library and grabbing that. Those work fine, especially for the connections that are specified. I, I just did this for someone the other day. I built a library of about four connections because his job was getting spec connections. And be, being able to have that flexibility and just go in there and place it around and around and around and copy it down the project is efficient and fast as long as it maybe opposing changes if those come in it has the ability to re refactor, to refactor and, think and think for itself when it needs to if it's just a static uh, it's a cartoon picture of two clip angles with two yeah. rows of bolts that's great until something changes right. then you're in trouble and and detailers and fabricators can also prove um, and I don't want to call it design assist, but let's call it design assist, is their value in a project. Is that okay, I understand, Mr. Engineer, Mr. Mm -hmm. Owner, that this is a connection that will hold the building up, but if you could take my input, I right. could reduce your cost and reduce your time in getting this up. And, and now as a fabricator, as a detailer, that knows a little bit more about how buildings go together from a connection standpoint, they can impact the project schedule time and cost and show their value as more than a guy that just draws lines on paper or punches hole in steel, that, that you're actually part of the project. And so I think I think that's another thing that that is very important when you're looking at connection design. Absolutely. So we were talking earlier a little bit about uh, a schedule connection. 
mm-hmm. how it doesn't interact with everything else. And it kind of makes me think about detailers back in the old days before you had all these great 3D products out there that you could use. They would have to visualize that joint on its own. So they'd have to look at the schedule, go look at their plan and say what else is framing in there and then in their mind have to be able to visualize what all that encompasses, what all is coming in on the other side and be on top of it enough and be able to have that 3D visualization in their mind, that, that ability it, to help it, make a good detailer when there wasn't a 3D model. It's certainly a product, it, was a, it was a job requirement mm-hmm. and I'm still a fan of people that I know can do that, that they can just see something and generate the 3D in their head. Um, the last thing on the connections I kind of wanted to cover is mm-hmm. is optimization. And so, you know, maybe the structural integrity says a quarter inch plate's the best for a for a shear plate or for a gusset plate. You know, but sometimes if you combine plate sizes on a project, let's say we can monetize it around two different plate sizes sure. instead of five, that the whole fabrication becomes cheaper. So if you over design maybe a, a connection, so let's say you take a gusset plate that quarter inch or a half yeah. inch plate would work, if I bumped it up to three quarter, maybe the footprint goes down. A fabricator has to put less plates on his plate burner because now he's only got two plate thicknesses that he's using for the entire project. Right. And so those things also come into play when you're looking at connection design in a project versus just going right. again to a, a spec schedule and saying apply what, what shows on the well, sheet. I remember a story, David, one of our sales reps, had told us about a company he was working with they had a connection design tool out there. And the connection it had created used like 5 8 inch bolts and had all these extra plates to build up the thickness of the web of the two, like of the two. All right. When, you know, we're a little biased because we see what we see in our software all the time inside of SDS2. We're like, what? Why don't you just bump up the tube size? Right. Where, you know, you don't always get those kind of suggestions all the time. It's other tools where it's not easy to just kind of reapply that because it's not thinking for you in that way. So I feel like we come a little bit at it a different way where, you know, the lightest material, lightest member isn't always cheapest. Right. When you put that lightest member in and you end up with web doublers and stiffeners and extra weld, that's not cheaper. Yeah. And, and fewest bolts a lot of times isn't right. cheaper, right? And sometimes if we can have more commonality mm-hmm. amongst connections and be able to erect it faster right. and be able to manufacture it faster having extra bolts if it would be much better instead of having sometimes these drill lines will do a pass for each bolt size mm-hmm. for each hole size if we could eliminate seven eighths inch let's say that would right. occur maybe three hole sizes occur on one column let's eliminate all of one size and that that column just save right. a bunch of time opt out of seven eighths inch bolts right only do three quarters or an inch, then you don't have you don't have the director out in the field trying to figure out, does this look like a seven eighths or does this look like a three quarter? I can't right. tell. So you don't get any of that mis hit or they don't get up there with what they thought was seven eighths and it's three fourths or the opposite way around, right? Right. There, there's a lot of considerations there that aren't necessarily connection design things in the sense of true connection design, but they're optimization of the fabrication and the erection. And, and that's what, just as critically important. And that's what makes it so intriguing, the whole concept of connections in a project, because, you again, we've spent billions of dollars figuring out, can this group of materials and welds mm-hmm. hold this connection up or this load up? But then there's all these other things that impact it. Right. You know, both where how it's applied in the structure, what's opposing, manufacturing mm-hmm. efic- efficiencies, all that stuff. Uh, it, it's just a really difficult concept to wrap your head around all of that. And then if it's done right, it can save... Right you know, hours and days and weeks in a project. Well, the, I've, I've seen over 15 years, seen so many companies that are small shops that grow. So they might be starting out as a couple guys using a mag drill yeah. in the shop. And that, what's efficient for them is drastically different than what's efficient for a shop with a beam line. Absolutely. And so being able to watch people grow understand how that that kind of works how those connections can work and how it can apply to their daily life in the job right and make their job easier for them to do and then help them grow you know build their business up and get a oh, guy got a beam line now okay hey well make sure you think about this 
you know, your connections now, does that affect how you guys are doing things? Because sometimes they don't even think about that. They've been just going and going and going. And, and our relationship with our the partners like Sideplate and others, that mm -hmm. how that connection impacts the project right. so much. You know, just by, by, by going to a different connection type, mm -hmm. how you, you may eliminate bracing and you may, you know, do this and do that inside a manufacturing right. facility. It's, it's it, you know, it's certainly just interesting how important it is in the project, yet how little some projects care about doing it correctly. Right. Well, and those, those licensed connections like side plate, core brace, and dirt like, what I've seen, like from Jim Steamer, mm -hmm. they had a project that went up like two weeks, two to six weeks faster. I'm not even sure what the dates now that he told me this, but it went up weeks faster. They, they had the steel up and everyone was waiting on the site because the other guys are getting in afterwards weren't scheduled for like another month later. Okay. So like the efficiencies that they have with some of these different connection types is incredible. And it's, there's a huge value there to get the owner, the end user back in the building. And you can save the same amount of time mm -hmm. in, in the application. So when you go from engineering design to detailing, right. if, if it's ambiguous, if you don't know what you're supposed to do, then it takes so much time and you're creating RFIs and you're asking questions. Whereas if you give them exactly what you want, the time's cut in so much. And half a detailer's time is spent looking for, waiting and asking for information instead of actually generating information on the model. Absolutely. Now, I'm going to bring it back to these license connections a little bit because I'm excited. We've got integrations with SidePlate already. Mm -hmm. uh, we're working with Durafuse. Uh, core braces in the final testing. So like we're just getting a lot of activity here to get those automations into the model so that we can support those connections for our customers just as easily as the automatic connection design. So right. I'm excited about that. I've been seeing a little bit of that from the marketing side of things. Uh, it and it, cool. and it's uh, something that's taken the industry more and more. The mm -hmm. concept of connections that were proprietary was my might not have been as popular mm -hmm. 20 years ago right and it's becoming very 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 common in the industry right now so okay Doug tell me you've been in the industry for oh, decades I'm oh, not wow. calling you old I am old but you've been in the industry for decades tell me a good connection design story uh, so off the top of my head uh, I so I've got Kansas City fabricator mm -hmm. a big industrial fabricator um, does lots of big industrial projects and uh, one day the detailer called me up and one day the detailer called me up and he's like hey Doug can you look at this connection it was a, it was a bracing connection and the gusset plates were literally 10 to 15 feet tall and there were so many bolts in this yeah. in this in this in this just to hold the gusset plate against the members so it could hold uh, the brace in and, mm -hmm. and he was like you know, is there a, is there a way where I could change the spacing on this? And I'm like, well, you probably could, but was there something in the integrity checks? Well, then he went back and said, well, it's really not. The only reason why all those bolts were there mm -hmm. were to fill it up because the gusset plate was so big. And he was able to go to nine and in some cases 12 inch spacing because these gusset plates were so huge. And he eliminated over half the bolts on the project just with that thought. It's the first time I'd heard it. Huh. Um, and now it's pretty commonplace. Right. You'll see um, a lot of fabricators go to six and nine inch spacing mm -hmm. on the- Or even pay for services to figure that out for them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so that's an example that of yeah. taking the integrity part of it mm -hmm. with the brace, but the brace impacted the bolts on the collar. And if you looked at them separately, you didn't need as many holes in the, in the angle or the shear or whatever right. is connected to the column so yeah it's kind of interesting a while back uh, we just had a programmer run a case study they ran a case study to calculate how many bolts were in there and how many uh, bolts you could remove if you optimize your connections and when we say optimize your connections in, in that instance we're really talking about for all those deep beams that are long span that really don't have much load on them the only reason that they're having five rows of bolts is because that plate has to be deeper than half the nominal depth of the member just to prevent twisting. 
But you don't need that many bolts. Just expand the plate, spread out the bolts, kind of yeah. set it up for the minimums, right? So they're, they're just running a quick check to run a case study. And, and a lot of those uh, schedules are based on that, right? Right. If it's a 18 inch beam, mm -hmm. just make sure it goes a little bit farther mm -hmm. past half nominal depth. It has nothing to do with the actual structural integrity. It's just right. servicing that uh, connection zone. And I've had a number of fabricators that like to do single sided clip angles. And engineers will push back saying it's going to twist when it's really just a shear plate if right. you think about it. So. Right. But like doing that, 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 I mean, that's how we got the costing tool in a sense because it's like well why don't we just expose those variables and let let people use this as a quick cost tool where they can compare their connections right hey i want to see if it's cheaper for this project if i do an expanded bolt spacing here for just the big members that need it right like that's pretty cool it's and pretty I, cool that you can do that inside your detailing software and get a good estimate of like can you save money and propose that to the engineer or to the to the owner and i don't want to say it, again reminds me i don't want to say connections make or break a project mm -hmm. but they're so important in a project both aesthetically and how if they're if it's exposed how it looks mm -hmm. to the rfi process if it's not spec'd out correctly and the, the fouling and the, the the things that you'll have happen wrong right. in it and then in the fabrication of it, how long it takes to build, and then in, in the erection. So, well, and the use of it. Yeah. You want to make sure it's going to stand, right? Yeah. So it, it's just a, it's an outstanding uh, discussion on connections. I don't. I, it's never ending mm -hmm. uh, because we can always improve, and we can always, you know, you don't know, don't want to say that we're going to get more like manufacturing, right. but we could get more like manufacturing, where we can get a little more repetitive in connections. And does that make more right. sense? Well, it, structural integrity, integrity, structural integrity. This is the steel and whiskey part. This is the whiskey <laughs> part of the steel and whiskey. <laughs> structural integrity is not the only efficiency that's important in a project. And that's a good way to put it. Good way There's to put it. many other things that can be more efficient, and the and the people that find fabrication efficiencies, uh, erection efficiencies, those are just as important as the structural efficiency for the overall project. Well, but to be clear, structural mm -hmm. integrity trumps in that, the, you know, it's, it's right. lives and like we want to make sure the building's safe. Once the building is safe, then efficiencies and the other stuff certainly make a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so earlier in the episode, episode is a podcast, right? Episode? Okay. Earlier in the episode, <laughs> uh, we talked about some of the license connections, mm -hmm. which brings up, for me, something that we've been working on is the SCS2 toolbox. The SCS2 toolbox is something that all of our customers who are current on software support or have an SCS2 subscription have access to through our website where they can download new toolbox items. These are plugins to SCS2 that will help give you added efficiency, whether it's the cost estimating tool uh, the core brace yeah. integration that will be launched here probably in July or August. Uh, there's the member member line extend. So if you import a model and the lines aren't extended to you know beam the column, which happens in IMCs, right? It'll automatically extend them, so you can get automated connection design out of it. Uh, and then there's many more things that are coming along with that, but uh, anybody that's current on support or has an SCS2 subscription can access this and install it in their local version of the software. Uh, hope we didn't bore you too much, um, entertained you a little, and gave you a nugget or two in another edition of Steel and Whiskey. I'm Doug Evans. I'm Michelle McCarthy. Take care, everybody.